Hello and welcome back to another midweek refill. I am Bishop A. Reginald Littman, your host and the senior pastor of the New Mountaintop Church located in Winston, Georgia. That's West Georgia, just 30 minutes west of downtown Atlanta. You can catch us every single Sunday morning live right here at 9.30 a.m. for our worship experience. And we want you to like, share, subscribe to the channel so that you'll be notified. Make sure that you hit that bell notification for all. And that way, every time new content is loaded, you'll be among the first to know. Well, this is part four of what I feel has been an exciting series for me to teach. And we've been talking about trusting God with your entire life. On last week, we talked about trusting God with your finances. And if you didn't catch the other three of this series, go back and check it out after you continue to watch this particular teaching. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about trusting God with your family issues. Now, let's just go on and set the record straight. Everybody has some type of family issue. It doesn't matter whether you live in the White House, whether you went to Morehouse, or whether you visit the outhouse. <laughs> Everyone from time to time will have some type of family issues. It's just a part and parcel of life. But there's something that you can do about it, particularly if you are a believer. You know, many people are giving up on family. Many are just going straight toward the divorce court or living in separate rooms or in some cases, separate homes, some, some cases, separate lives. But you don't have to be that way. You can actually trust God even with your family issue. So whether your family issue is that you have a child that's gone astray or your spouse is acting as if they bump their head or whatever the case may be, you can trust God even with your most difficult of family issues. So I want you to understand that the first principle that God wants me to share with you this week is take your concerns to God in prayer. Let me repeat that again. Take your concerns to God in prayer. You see, friends, when family issues arise, the first step, the very first step is not to argue, to fuss and cuss and all of that good stuff, but it is to bring those concerns directly to God. God cares so much about you that he wants you to talk to him directly with every family issue that concerns you. Well, how do we know that? Because the scriptures teach us that God wants us to not be nervous, worried, anxious, or filled with fear or anxiety or dismay about any single thing. In fact, he invites us about how to handle the cares of life, and even the concerns of our family issues, he invites us in the book of Philippians to invite him in and bring it before him. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 and 7 reads like this. Do not be anxious. To be anxious literally means to choke yourself with worry. It means to be filled with anxiety. It means to be clogged, if you will, to the point that nothing positive can come out of your mouth and nothing positive can go into your spiritual body, your spiritual man. So he says, do not be anxious. And it's in second person singular, which means not he, the, they, or she, or him, but you. Hey, it is a command. It is in the imperative tense. It is saying, you do not be anxious anxious about anything. But here's how you handle even your family issues. In everything, in every situation, here's how you handle it. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. 
And you know that eighth verse goes on to say, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds. You see, it is those moments that we feel concerns about our family that we are invited by God himself to take those cares and concerns to God in prayer. Hey, when is the last time you prayed for your family? I mean, not just when things were going well, but when there was a crisis. When's the last time that you took your concerns before the Lord in prayer? That's what he wants you to do. He wants you to trust him with your entire life. And that includes trusting God with your family issues. So remember Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I do want to remind you as well that there is a free PDF handout that you could find in the description below. There's a link there where you can get that. It's a study guide. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It is free 99. Go get it. And it has discussion questions that will help to deepen this lesson. You can share it with your friends. You can send it to other people. You can jump on the phone or on a Zoom call with your family, your friends, your coworkers, and have a virtual discussion of the scriptures that are in it. So I definitely want you to go check that out on this lesson about trusting God with your entire family. All right. So number one, take your concerns to God in prayer. Let's go to number two. Now here's number two, seek God's wisdom and for your resolution. Seek God's wisdom for resolution. Seek God's wisdom, not yours, but seek the wisdom of God for a resolution to the situation. Now we often get so caught up in what we think, how we feel, the way we think things should go and be. But ultimately, God is saying to us, hey, you need my wisdom. Yours is not working. In fact, your own wisdom might be what got you into the conflict that you're facing right this second. So God wants us to seek him for his wisdom that we might, in fact, find a resolution for our situations. So it's important to understand this, you know, when we're talking about seeking God's wisdom for resolutions, because family issues can be incredibly complex. In fact, I don't really know anything beyond family issues that can be so complex that you end up in a quandary. And look at this picture. Everybody's got their hands up in the air. And this is not a, a praise or worship posture. This is a frustration posture. You know, have you ever had those moments where it's like a domino effect and everybody in the house is just about to lose it and filled with anxiety and filled with anger and bitterness? Some of you live alone and everybody in the house is full of anxiety and bitterness because we can even get our own selves worked up over family matters. But I want you to see what the scriptures teach us concerning this issue of submitting our concerns about our family to the Lord. Well, we find in Proverbs 2 and 6, where the scriptures teach us, the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. The Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? Let me tell you what it means. I'm going to break it all the way down, give you the Lippmann translation of this verse. It means this right here. Wisdom does not always come from you and me, especially from our mouths. <laughs> but wisdom comes from the mouth of God. That's where it comes from. And it also means this right here. We don't know everything. And when we get emotionally high, strong, we lose the ability to respond rationally and sensibly, which is why we need the wisdom of God to resolve matters in our family. And it's from his mouth that knowledge and understanding and wisdom comes. That's why we have to do this. So we have to learn to close our mouth open our ears to hear what God is trying to tell us that we can find resolution when there's issues and or conflict and things get complex in our homes as believers. 
So instead of trying to rely solely on human wisdom or your own emotional reactions, which can be so uncanny and so unhealthy sometimes and even so unholy, can I get an amen in the comments? <laughs> Consult the word of God and pray for divine wisdom to guide you through troubles when your family is having conflict. You need the wisdom of God. We need to also learn to be quiet sometimes and listen more to God, but even also to our family members. See, wisdom is acquired by hearing, not by talking. That's why you used to hear people say that when they get around older people, they shut up because they have lived an experience and they want to gain knowledge. Well, sometimes even kids can tell you something you don't know. If you will learn to close your mouth and listen and hear the whole counsel of God. I love this. If this is blessing you, please be sure to drop a comment in the comments. Drop a comment there and let us know which one of these do you need to work on this week. All right, let's go to number three. So number three, we have to lean on God's strength, not our own. So we lean on God's wisdom, not our own, but we also need to learn how to lean on God's strength and not our own. There's nothing on earth like family issues to drive you insane. However, when we run out of strength, we don't need to run out of kindness. Let me say that again. That was good. When we run out of strength, we don't need to run out of kindness. We still need to be kind to our family, even in time of conflict, when it seems like they've lost their minds. How do we do that? The strength of God. We need the strength of God we cannot rely on our own strength when we're trying to really submit our family to God and trust God with our family issues. See, in times of family strife, it can be tempting to try to solve everything through your own efforts. But I got a question for you. How's that working for you? Actually, it's when we try to solve things through our own efforts that we mess things up even further than they already are. So the scriptures teach us how to deal with times of fear, frustration, and angst and anxiety. Isaiah 41.10 says, so do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. Watch this, church. Don't lean to your own strength. Don't live in fear that the worst is going to happen in your family. Don't expect the worst. Don't anticipate the worst possible outcome. Because God says, I am with you. He says, don't be dismayed, which means to be puzzled because your eyes are going in so many different direction, directions that it's almost like looking at a maze and you're trying to figure your way out, figure your way out. God says, don't do that to yourself. I am your God. In other words, your rescue, your deliverance, your peace, your joy, it's not up to you to acquire. You can't get it in a bottle. You can't get it in a blunt. You can't get it in uh, some herbal medication. You need to get it from God. And that's why he says, keep your eyes on me. I am your God. You're not your God. You can't fix everything. You can't do everything. You can't fix anybody. He says, I will strengthen you. Remember this point he is lean on God's strength and not your own. He says, I will strengthen you. So that means that when you try to strengthen yourself, when you try to exhibit this strength that makes you look like something you're not, you're an imposter and you're trying to take over God's job in your life. He says, I will strengthen you and I will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I would rather be in God's right hand than trying to do things with my own two hands because I mess things up and so do you. We all do. That's why we have to rely on God's strength and not our own. Remember, God's strength is the source that we can lean on when we're facing family issues. So here's number four. Strive for love and forgiveness. Strive for love and forgiveness. Now, you know, it can be very difficult to forgive, can't it? Because we can get so caught up in the emotions of the moment, the pain of the moment, 
in our feelings and how we were disappointed and how we were let down and how our expectations were not met and this, that, and the third. But we need to strive for love and forgiveness. To forgive literally means to stop watering. <laughs> it means to stop feeding, to allow something to die. So when we consistently talk about what happened and this happened and that happened and this happened, and I'm, I, you know, we go on and on about what has occurred. We are feeding and watering and nurturing the pain. But when we stop feeding it, stop watering it, when we stop nursing it, that's when God can start reversing it. And God can allow the pain to die though the memory may stay with us. So forgiving means I stop concentrating on it. I stop feeding it. I stop watering it. I stop nursing it. I let God start reversing it. And the pain eventually subsides. So that's our job as believers is to strive for love and forgiveness. Now, we realize it's not always possible to continue in fellowship with certain situations, certain people and all of that. So we're not telling you to stay in an abusive marriage. Certainly not. God forbid. Heavens no. (laughs) But what we are saying is what the scriptures say. And in Colossians, we're told in chapter 3, verse 13, that, that when we're dealing with family issues, that our goal should be reconciliation whenever it's possible. Let's look at what the Bible says. So Colossians 3 and 13 instructs us, bear each with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. So that's a tough verse to live out, isn't it? We're to bear each bear with each other. We're to forgive one another. And when there's a grievance against someone, that's what we're supposed to do. It's bear with each other, forgive one another, find ways to let it die and work through it and keep moving. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. You know what that means? Before we were born, before we ever sinned or repented, the Lord forgave us. So he allowed that act that he knew we would do over and over again to die in his mind. In fact, he died so it could die. When we die to our flesh, It means that we allow those grievances, we allow those sins against us, those trespasses, whatever you want to call it, we allow it to die. When the will of our flesh, which often seeks gratification and verification and validation, when we allow that part of us to die, so can the pain. So are you the reason why you're still in pain? Because you're holding on to something that you need to allow to die and be buried. So this is really important as a teaching because number five, even when you're hurting, even when there are family issues that play in your life, number five, you have to trust God's sovereign plan. God has a sovereign plan for you and your entire house and your entire family. And sometimes despite our very best of efforts, family issues may not resolve as quickly as we think that they should or as quickly as we desire. But understanding the fact that God has a sovereign plan for our lives can keep us focused. You know, I love what Paul said in the book of Romans. Romans 8 and 28, it reassures us that we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That's you. That's me. Even when family issues seem insurmountable, trusting in God's sovereign plan can offer hope and a perspective. You know, family, I know that this particular teaching is not as easy and palatable, just like trusting God with your finances was not necessarily as easy and palatable as others were. But when you apply these truths and when you apply these biblical principles, you cultivate an attitude of trust in God. When dealing with family issues, encouraging both spiritual and relational growth. Hey, this is Bishop Littman. And I want to say thanks for watching the Midweek Refill. Be sure to turn, tune in and turn in. Same time, same channel 
next week for another insightful teaching. Don't forget, right there in the description box is a free PDF handout just for you and all of those that you want to share it with. Hey, until next week, God bless you. We love you. You go with God. Be sure to like, share, thumbs up, subscribe, all of that good stuff. We want to get to a thousand subscriptions. So I need you to subscribe right now and hit that bell notification so you'll be notified every time new content is loaded. Until next week, God bless you.